come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Amen. Well, good morning, all, and Happy New Year. Any resolutions? At the 9 o'clock, a couple of people volunteered. They were, you know, younger folks. Uh, but uh, I won't ask anybody to share. Uh, New Year's resolutions are, of course, notoriously hard to keep. Um, I saw a statistic, and I don't know if it's, you know, totally legitimate, but it seems about right that 80% of people who make resolutions have uh, dropped them or even forgotten about them by the second week of February. So why is it so hard to keep these New Year's resolutions? Uh, is it merely, as, as some articles I, I saw suggest, um, a failure to grasp or to uh, put into practice some principles of, of habit formation? Um, or uh, is it also something deeper, something spiritual or existential? Well, life, of course, pulls us in many different directions. Uh, we are buffeted by the winds of the world, as the 8th century English monk B. the Venerable put it. Uh, or more recently, as Leonard Cullen put it, the world is all forgetting, and the heart is a rage of directions. And it is hard, then, to uh, make change, lasting change, under such conditions. So why do we want to make New Year's resolutions to begin with? Perhaps it has something to do with um, a sense that, that many of us seem to have uh, of there being a gap between you know, who we are on the one hand and, and who we would like to be, or even who we feel we should be uh, on, on the other. And to make matters more difficult and complicated still, um, it seems like many of us aren't always entirely sure uh, who we want to be. It's not only life, life's demands that pull us in different directions. Uh, as Leonard Cohen said, it is our hearts, our desires. The heart is a range of directions. And so uh, this makes it difficult to, uh, to know, to remember, uh, or to act. We really center our lives upon uh, what we know perhaps deep down really matters. This is quite a predicament, and I think helps to make sense of why it's so hard to keep these resolutions up. Uh, and it's not a new predicament. Uh, St. Paul uh, seemed to be writing uh, something very similar in his letter to the Romans, uh, and, and he concludes his, his uh, exposition of this dilemma with uh, this, this exasperated question, uh, who will rescue me, or who will deliver me? Now, bringing this to mind makes people like Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who's already playing the role, all the more so. Tutu, of course, uh, passed away just this last Sunday at the age of, at the age of 90, and, and uh, in contrast to this, this fractured quality that I've just described, uh, Tutu is a man of integrity, uh, with a real purity of heart. He, of course, then helped to end apartheid in South Africa and uh, afterwards uh, was a leading advocate for peaceful reconciliation there. And during that time, and subsequently, he was looked to as the moral compass of the South African people. Now, he was not only known and loved for what he did, but of course for uh, who he was as well. He was uh, known for his kindness, his compassion, his wisdom, his joy, and of course, his sense of humor. Um, even uh, what we could describe as his silliness. Uh, Barack Obama described him as having an English sense of humor. And uh, have any of you heard his laugh? Was it due to his laugh? Yeah, uh, it, it is uh, just amazing to know what he's been through and, and know uh, his wisdom and his leadership. Uh, and his strength, and also see uh, such silliness, you know, uh, almost 
boyish in a sense. Has anybody seen his, his interaction with the Dalai Lama on video? They like tease each other and tickle each other, and uh, it's just the, the most beautiful thing. Uh, and it makes me feel a lot better about my own extremely juvenile sense of humor. Uh, uh, Tutu is also a very humble man. Uh, at his funeral yesterday, he was carrying a very simple pine uh, casket. Of course, he was a moral exemplar, and, and to use a phrase of his own, he was a god carrier. Now, Desmond Tutu not only helped people, he helped people want to be better. The Reverend Bernice King, one of the, the daughters of Martin Luther King Jr., said that we are all better because Desmond Tutu is here. His life is focused on what matters, and can likewise, likewise help us focus on what really matters. He was a saint who can help us to see that the only thing really worth living for is sanctity, holiness. And I think this has a lot to do with why we are drawn to people like this, why we love people like this. He was a fulfillment of this morning's opening prayer of the wonderfully restored human dignity brought about in the birth of Christ. So, if we so love and are so inspired by people like this, if we want to be more like them, why do they seem rare? Why does it seem hard for so many of us to fully give ourselves over to such holy simplicity? And how did Desmond Tutu manage it? Well, I've learned that, that Desmond Tutu was a lot like Jesus in today's gospel. In it, of course, you just heard about the 12-year-old Jesus going to Jerusalem with his family for the Passover, uh, and then staying behind uh, in the temple while his family returns. So unbeknownst to them, we should cut them some slack, because in those days, uh, apparently up to 50,000 pilgrims would descend on Jerusalem for, for the Passover. So think about like home alone times 4,000 or something. Uh, it would be easy to, to miss somebody in the crowd like that. Uh, Jesus very clearly was at home in the temple, despite his family's anxieties. He desired to be there. Uh, in the words of Psalm 84, which we recited just a little bit earlier, How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart rejoices in the living God. Now, this is the very first story we get in Luke's Gospel of Jesus' life after infancy. And of course, we find it in the temple, at prayer. And this prefigures the, the centrality of prayer in his adult life that we read about later in the Gospels. So although Jesus, of course, lived this very active life of service, prayer was an anchor. And Desmond Tutu was the same way. Uh, Andrew McGowan, who was my seminary dean, as well as uh, Brandon and Jesse's, uh, used to preach to a small group of nuns for a weekday mass back when they lived in Australia. Now, I had known about this from my time in seminary, he mentioned it at some point, but what I did not know until this week is that that small group of nuns that he was preaching to uh, frequently had a, a certain guest, and I'll let you guess who it was, uh, Desmond Tutu. And he was there because of his deep devotion to the Eucharist. Now, according to, to Andrew McGowan, um, Tutu's life story, you know, who he was, everything that he did, everything that he's loved and, and will be remembered for, uh, cannot really be understood apart from the sacramental basis upon which it was found. Indeed, he went to church and, and received communion uh, last week on Christmas Day, the day before he died, uh, despite his failing health. Now, when Jesus' parents find him in the temple, he says to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? This can also be translated, Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? This speaks to me of, of the temporal connection between prayer and service, between contemplation and action. Desmond Tutu's faith took him to the forefront of the struggle for liberation and justice in the 
and injustice in South Africa and, and beyond, but uh, it started and always returned to, to prayer. From prayer and spiritual practice and devotion, we receive it in the words of Paul's letter to the Ephesians that we heard a bit of today. We receive a spirit of wisdom. We come to know God. The eyes of our hearts become enlightened. Or to use a beautiful imagery from reading from Jeremiah we heard, we become like a water garden. Through prayer we can gain an inner freedom from the many directions our hearts and lives and our world seem to pull us in. Uh, I quoted a prayer by Leonard Cohen earlier that it says the world is all forgetting. Is uh, the world is all forgetting and the heart is a range of directions. Now this prayer continues, but your name unifies the heart, and the world is lifted into its place. Blessed is the one who waits in the traveler's heart for his turn. So, if you will allow it, uh, a gentle suggestion for a New Year's resolution. Resolve to cultivate a deeper life of prayer, of spiritual practice and devotion, of coming to church more regularly, you know, if it's safe and, and advisable for you right now. Uh, and if you're already coming to church regularly, to come with renewed commitment and attentiveness and expectation what all this can be about. Because, of course, it's good to, to change habits and, and behaviors, but it's at least as important to work from the inside out. So why not think really big? God is life, and so to be really connected to God is to be connected to life. And of course, that's what we're looking for with New Year's resolutions, a, a, a more... A, more full life. Now, one of Desmond Tutu's favorite prayers was, was this. The one I opened the sermon with, he, he preferred the Elizabeth Ethan language of the 1662 prayer book. It goes, Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful people, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and they shall be created. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth. And this speaks so much of what I hope to convey this morning. Because when the Spirit of God fills our hearts, God's love is kindled within us, and we are sent forth in the power of that Spirit to renew the face of the earth. But to be filled with the Spirit in this way, we really have to make time and space in our lives. Just as athletes need physical conditioning, so do we, the people of God, need spiritual condition. So, may the knowledge and love of God and all of God's saints, particularly Desmond Tutu on this day, draw us toward the light and keep us strong, good, kind, and loving at the beginning of this new year and at all times.